Hi there, and welcome back to this workshop about Suzanne Chiani's Book La Cookbook in VCV Rack. We have seen quite a few playing techniques. It is now time for rhythm improvisation and space distortion. Most of the performances from Suzanne Chiani include a rhythmic improvisation as the climax of the piece. Even though the system doesn't seem to be drum-oriented, the 248 has still a few cards left in its sleeve. The synthesis method used to get a percussive sound is not described, but from what we can hear on the original recordings, it seems to be a mixture of tonal resonance and noisy sources triggered by a short envelope. As always, playing with the octave switch is interesting. We can also adjust the slew to have a tabla-like pitched drum sound. This section is improvisation above all, and as recommended by Mrs. Chiani, it requires a lot of practice to develop the mental and physical reflexes to keep the control of what is happening. Let's go through a few techniques to transform the 248 into a generative drum machine. Each playhead of the 248 has two trigger channel. We barely used this feature at this point. We will use only one trigger channel per playhead to control the low pass gates passing through an OR gate for further manipulation. The way we make it work is not really faithful to the Bukla 248, but it should do the trick. With the Shape Master, we cannot send a trigger on specific stages, but we can use a channel to emulate a gate sequence. By driving the two playheads with a ramp synced to the main clock, we can make a steady sequence with two drum tracks. The first example of the cookbook proposes a semi-generative rhythm. While AFG1 keeps repeating itself, AFG2 is driven by a synced random signal. 
This way the second drum track becomes generative accent. We will patch AFG2 to the source of uncertainty. As always, the more steps are turned on, the higher is the probability to trigger. The next example is referred as rhythmical ornament. It is probably one of the earliest examples of random ratcheting. It involves a mix of the main clock and the internal time engine of the 248. We cannot emulate this feature, but there is a workaround to have a similar result by using another clock source. We happen to have one in the source of uncertainty. We will send it into the second gate channel of AFG2 using the VCA and let it pass through only on certain stages. The ratcheting is combined with the first channel using the OR gate. Now we can adjust the tempo by ear to have a rhythmic division. And now, here comes the very embarrassing time where I have to demonstrate the power of quadriphony on a stereo platform. I have patched a poor emulation of a quad space by damping the high frequency on the rear channels. Thankfully, we have a visual feedback to help us understand the different space that can be generated. Quadriphony is a key element of Mrs. Chiani's performances. It is important to keep in mind the relationship between the melodic side of the instrument and the space in which it is heard. The first example is a continuous curved space controlled by a looping envelope. In the string patch, the looping envelope is also used to control the bowing effect of the sound. It is interesting to point out that it's not really about modulating the position of each voice in the space, but to distort the entire space in which we hear the music. The voices can be set at specific places relative to each other, but all the CV inputs are bridged, so there is only one modulation source for all voices.
The looping envelope can be easily modified by the voltage adder set to control the release timer. The second space is a discrete special rhythm, a repetitive sequence shifting the space in which the sound is coming from one speaker at the time. The result is obvious, but the way to make it happen is quite interesting. The position is set on the left and right dimension and on the front and rear dimension. We need to combine two modulation sources to push the sound at the right coordinates, so the sound is emitted only by one speaker at the time. To achieve this goal, we are going to create a sequence out of almost nothing. The modulation source is simple, a two-step sequence, one high, one low. We can even go simpler than that by using a gate signal from a clock divider. We will send this binary sequence into our three voice polyphonic sample and hold, and we will use our clock as a trigger source. We can then modulate the X and Y position with output 1 and 3. This will give us all the combinations needed to make the rotating discrete sequence. The direction can be inverted by choosing another output. We can also have opposite directions for each voice. This space is often used to add depth to the melody from the row A, as there is very little rhythm within the melody. For the other examples, we will make use of the source of uncertainty. The smooth output transports the instrument in a continuous random way. The stepped output allows us to set the instrument in a discrete position in sync to the rhythm. A short envelope sounds especially nice with this setting. Any combination of the above is interesting. Thank you for watching up to there. I will be happy to have you back in the next episode. Meanwhile, you will find many useful things in the description, including the VCV files, original recordings of the patches, the link to the cookbook, some interesting lecture from Suzanne Ciani and the modular grid link to her former and current setup. Don't hesitate to subscribe for the next episode and share this if you know someone who might be interested. See you in the next episode!